Hi, I'm Mandy and welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be reviewing a very special game that was released a couple weeks ago, and that is Atelier Marie Remake The Alchemist of Salberg. Now this release marks a pretty historic moment for the Atelier series in the West. Atelier Marie is actually the very first Atelier game. It originally launched on the PS1 in Japan back in 1997, but this is the first time it's ever received an official English release. Koi Tecmo were kind enough to gift me a review code for the Nintendo Switch version of the game, which I greatly appreciate. I did pre-order a physical copy on my own as well, which sadly hasn't arrived yet. Um, so please rest assured that all my opinions in this video are 100% genuine. I'm very passionate about this series, and while I do have a lot of praise for the remake, I also have a fair share of critiques, and I'm going to be sharing all of that with you today. If you're looking for certain topics, you can check the description for timestamps, but to get started, let's talk about the story. Atelier Marie tells the story of a girl named Marlone, or Marie for short. Marlone is a student at the Royal Academy of Magic. Her grades have been lacking as of late, so to give her a chance to redeem herself, her instructor decides to give her a special practical exam. Marie is given an atelier to run, and she has five years to create an item that will wow her instructor and prove her worth as an alchemist. And that's basically it. The story in this game is really more of a supplement to the gameplay. For the most part, you're left alone to run the workshop and focus on your alchemical pursuits. There are a handful of characters that Marie can befriend, and each of them have their own little side stories that you uncover as you grow closer to them. There are also some seasonal story events scattered throughout, as well as a handful of different endings you can unlock by meeting certain prerequisites throughout the game. But the story elements are quite light. Atelier Marie really isn't a very narrative-driven game. Where it really shines is in the gameplay. So like most games in the series, in Atelier Marie you spend your time doing two major things, going on expeditions to gather materials, and synthesizing items in Marie's workshop. One of the hallmarks of the early Atelier games is the time management system. The player is given tasks to complete, and a deadline to complete them by, with different actions causing different amounts of time to pass. The Atelier Marie remake gives you the option to play with the traditional deadline in place in what they call normal mode, or to remove this and play at your own pace in unlimited mode. Now the time management aspect is one of the things that always really appealed to me in these games, so I did choose to play the remake on normal mode with the 5 year deadline. And that may be important to keep in mind as I share my experience with you. So let's talk about crafting first. Like I mentioned, Marlone's goal is to develop her alchemy skills so that she's able to synthesize an item that will impress her professor when the time comes for her final exam. As a way of making some extra money along the way, Marie can also accept quests from the townsfolk and her companions. These quests will also boost Marie's reputation level, allowing her access to a greater variety of recruitable characters and events. In the beginning of the game, she has a humble number of craftable items, but her repertoire expands as she purchases more recipe books from the Academy and discovers more ingredients out in the field. Each item takes a certain number of days to synthesize, and the success rate is dependent on both Marie's overall level as well as her fatigue level. Some of the higher rank items are made using lower level craftables, creating crafting trees that increase in complexity as you move further through the game. The thing I really enjoy about these games is that it's all about progression and building yourself up over time. In the beginning, it can take so long to gather everything you need to craft your items and build up your savings, but as you get further into the game, you get into a rhythm. You hire workers, you manage to optimize your time and maximize your output, get into a sustainable workflow, and things that were once difficult become much easier. And as a natural consequence, those more complex recipes become much more manageable. But at the same time, it doesn't become boring. Once you're in a place where you've got your bases covered and you're bringing in enough money, you can start to focus on your greater goals, like taking out that bandit camp or defeating the magician at the top of Erfolg Tower. It's a very fixating and engaging gameplay loop that feels very rewarding once you're able to master it. Now let's switch gears and talk about gathering. 
Each gathering location will take a certain number of days to travel to. Once you reach that location, every gathering attempt and enemy battle you engage in will cause an additional day to pass. You can choose if you want to gather in person, which allows you to run around the area and be more selective about the items you're taking home and the monsters you want to fight, or you can choose to do quick gathering, which imitates the way it worked in the original game. In this mode, all you have to do is simply click a button to say you'd like to continue gathering, and you'll either get a random mix of items from the area or an enemy encounter. Atelier Marie utilizes a simple turn-based battle system. Each character has one regular attack, one special attack, and the ability to use items. Special attacks are stronger than the basic attack, but require a longer cooldown, so your character will have to wait longer before their next turn. Positioning and formation can also impact the character's performance in battle. Party members in the front row have a boost to their physical attack, at the cost of decreased magic attack and physical defense. On the flip side, characters in the back row have a magic buff, but a decrease in physical attack and magic defense. Marie can hire up to two companions to take into battle with her. There are some pretty strong characters you can unlock throughout the game, and Marie herself can be pretty dangerous with her use of attack items. In the atelier, you can craft a variety of weapons, including bombs and super bombs, and these can be very, very powerful. So that is the greater gameplay loop of Atelier Marie. Gather materials, synthesize items, and take down monsters. Overall, I'd say the game isn't very difficult, and it is quite short, with an average playthrough taking under 10 hours. Even with the deadline in normal mode, you have a lot of time to work with and the prerequisites for most endings are fairly straightforward. If you have a goal in mind and you focus all your efforts on it, I don't think you'll have too much trouble reaching that goal before time runs out. And that's on the assumption that you're playing in normal mode, because again, you do have the option to remove the deadlines, in which case the difficulty is substantially lowered. Now that might be off-putting to some, but I think that's part of the charm in this game. It's not really about how difficult it is in the final moments where you slay that dragon without breaking a sweat, or synthesize that philosopher's stone with weeks to spare. It is, as they say, the journey. The real work is in the preparation for these events. Building up your empire, optimizing your fairies' work schedules for efficient megabomb production so that you can get that satisfying kill. That's the real fun in this game. In my opinion, anyway. Now on the topic of difficulty, something I really wanted to mention about the remake is that it has a ton of quality of life upgrades that make it a much smoother and more streamlined experience than the original. Unlike the original, the remake has a very thorough tutorial that walks you through the beginning of the game and sets you up for success. There's also an event list that will tell you exactly what you need to do to trigger certain events, including the criteria for different endings but it doesn't spoil what those events or endings are. This is a massive help. In the original, you're always sort of doing things on a whim and just hoping you're on the right path, so I think this is a really handy feature to include for people who want to be sure that they're staying on track. The remake also gives you a lot more information on the item synthesis screen, during battles, and when managing your workers, which makes a big difference. In general, the game is a lot clearer about what you need to do and the way that things work, and I think that's fantastic. They've done a great job at making this a smoother experience for the player, which is exactly what you want to see in a remake. So let's talk graphics and presentation. As you can see, they've completely rebuilt the game into this lovely 3D environment, and it looks quite nice for the most part. The gathering areas especially are a lot more immersive. In the original, we just had still images and text that would narrate our journey, but here you can actually explore the world and get your hands dirty. Locations around the town also feel more alive and interesting. For the first time, we're able to walk around the town square, which is very exciting. But there is one glaring issue I have with the graphical design, which you may have picked up on already, and that is this awful DOF blur. Now, I understand some people like this style, and you're obviously more than welcome to enjoy what you enjoy. However, 
This was a massive disappointment for me because there is no way to turn it off. Call me nitpicky, but that's a big deal to me. Why on earth would I enjoy almost half of my screen being obscured by this blur? When I play a game, I'm not usually staring at my character, I am looking where I'm going. And in this game, it's just so unpleasant to do that. I mean, Marie can't even see three feet in front of her, which is just so silly. I don't find this cinematic in any way, I just find it irritating and brain-numbing. And you might be asking, Mandy, why are you so angry? And the reason is because, no, you can't turn the blur off for the gameplay, but you can turn it off in photo mode. This feels like a big slap in the face because they're showing me how good the game could look but won't give me the chance to play it like that. And that infuriates me. I really don't understand the logic behind not allowing us to turn it off. The only thing I can think of is that maybe there's a performance issue and this is some sort of workaround for that, but that's kind of unacceptable to me. If that is the issue, I see no reason why this game couldn't have been optimized better. Granted, I'm not the most knowledgeable about this stuff, but the game really doesn't feel that demanding, and we've certainly seen other developers, and even Gust themselves, come out with games that are both graphically impressive and perform well. So I don't think that's quite it. I hope this is something they can offer a patch for, because it does sour the experience some. I don't want to be staring at human-shaped blobs all day, you know? I just want to be able to see this beautiful world they've created. Now the blur isn't as bothersome out in the field. It's still a little annoying, but it feels more like an obscuring fog than anything else, so it doesn't feel as out of place as it does in the town. There is another thing that bothers me here though. So they've done this thing where if you stand too close to a tree, it will disappear, so that if you happen to walk behind it, you're still able to see Marie. It makes sense, except that the forest is covered in trees, so they're constantly flashing in and out, and it gets annoying. I think it would have been fine to just leave them there. In my opinion, they really don't obscure your view so much that it's necessary to pop them in and out all the time. I think it's actually a lot more distracting and immersion breaking to be doing this every five steps. And then for the big stuff that actually does get in the way, they pop them out alright, but they leave this terrible blurry silhouette behind. And it just looks incredibly awkward and out of place. I feel like there could have been so many better solutions. Being able to rotate the camera is an obvious one, but for whatever reason they didn't include that feature. That's fine, I guess, but still, I think if you're going to go that route, then maybe design the world in a way in which things aren't obscuring the screen so frequently. And again, for the smaller things, just leave them, it's fine. Anyway, I do apologize if my issues with the presentation feel too nitpicky. I just think that these elements of the game make it feel a little unpolished. And that's disappointing. This is our chance to finally experience Marlon's story, not only for the first time in English, but for the first time in a 3D setting as well. And I just want to see it shine as strongly as it possibly can. Admittedly, the chibi style isn't really my thing, but I think the 3D design is quite lovely overall, and it feels almost like a missed opportunity to hide that beauty under things like excessive blur and unnecessary pop-outs. Now before I wrap this up, I also wanted to touch on some of the digital deluxe perks as well. So the digital deluxe upgrade comes with some of the usual stuff you might expect, like costume packs and bonus music, but it also comes with the first ever official English release of the original Atelier Marie Plus. Now this is a big deal to me. I can't tell you how excited I was when I found out they were releasing the original game alongside the remake. I actually have the Japanese Dreamcast copy of the game, and I played a bit of it in the past, but I wasn't able to get too far into it. So being able to finally experience that game properly was really amazing. I played through the entire thing before even starting the remake, and I had so much fun. In some ways, I actually prefer it. There's definitely a simplicity to the presentation, but at the same time, it's challenging in that way that a lot of old RPGs are. It's very vague about what you're supposed to do, but I kind of enjoy the challenge in trying to break the code and figure that all out. 
The gameplay loop is essentially the same as the remake, but more fast paced because you don't have those immersive areas to wander through. It really is just straight to business. I really appreciate that they did this dual release because I think preserving the history of a series like this is really important. However, I do think it's a shame that it's exclusive to the Digital Deluxe. Obviously, it would be lovely if it were included in the standard release, but I know that's asking for a bit too much. At the very least though, I really would have preferred to see this release as a separate game so that the people who are interested in it could grab it more easily. As it stands, it's locked behind the purchase of the remake, which means you'll have to spend $50 plus the additional $20 for the Digital Deluxe if you want access to this game. And that's a real shame. So those are my thoughts on Atelier Marie, The Alchemist of Salberg. In summary, I think both the original and the remake are great games with a really enjoyable gameplay loop. The remake succeeded in updating the original for a smoother experience, while at its core remaining very faithful to it. I think there is room for improvement, but most of my criticisms are quite surface level. I don't think they're likely to impact your enjoyment of the game too much, except for the blur thing. That is incredibly obnoxious and upsets me every time I set foot outside the atelier. Anyway, I hope this review was helpful. I'd recommend Atelier Marie to people who really enjoy crafting and management games. The battles aren't overly difficult and the story is quite light, but when it comes to resource management, worker management, and time management, that's where Atelier Marie really shines. It's a simple game, but one that I personally got a ton of enjoyment out of. So if these are things that are interesting to you, it might be worth a try. I hope you enjoyed this review, and I will see you next time. Bye!